WBBM FM Chicago. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life, life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard, directed by Mac Benoff, and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good. It's refreshing. And the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. So chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum often, every day. Millions enjoy it, and you will, too. Now, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia. You want to know if Pasquale is still bothering me to marry his fat daughter Rosa? And the answer is, he's a never stop. Pasquale <laughs> says, I'm going to fall for his daughter even if he's got to push me. <laughs> but mamma mia, that the girl is so fat, 250 pounds. You know, mamma mia, how some fat the girls that they go after? Well, with Russia, when they go out there, she keeps on a gun. <laughs> <laughs> and when I'm a telepathy, I don't like a fat girl. He just laughs. A couple of days ago, he slipped a little poem under my daughter. Marry my daughter, don't worry about the fat. The sooner comes the winter, you're going to thank her for that. <laughs> Mr. Pasquale, he's a never stopper with his tricks. He says everything is a fair in a love and a war, and he's a give me a choice, either marry Russia or join the army. <laughs> Mamma mia, if only the draft the board would have taken me. <laughs> One time Pasquale says I should go with him and Russia to City Hall for some dog license. But I was lucky. Half the Pasquale paid the two dollars. I found out that the Rosa was a not the Rosa was a cocker spaniel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that the man is never going to stop trying to make me trouble. I should have married his daughter. But the mamma mia, down the deep, he's not so bad. I owe him one hundred twenty dollars of rent right now, and he says I could pay him back even a year from now with the 12 or 14 percent interest. <laughs> but right now from my antique shop window, I can see his restaurant, and, and, and I see he's coming with a customer. He's talking to me. And Joe, that meal comes to one dollar even. Right. Uh, that meal was delicious, Pasquale. I'm glad you enjoyed the one dollar, please. Um... I got a hand at you, Pasquale. You make the best spaghetti in town. Look, I don't care if you hate the stuff, but pay me the buck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't get excited. Well, come on, I don't like my cash register to stand around with its mouth open. It's liable to catch cold. <laughs> yeah, let's see now. Where did I put that $20 bill? You better hurry up. I got a hundred dishes in the back. It's just dying to shake your hands with you. <laughs> Look, Pasquale, my unemployment check comes in tomorrow. Please, and... no hard luck of stories. Look, Pasquale, I got a buck. See? Four quarters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I trusted you all the time, Joe. Just a minute while I bite into these quarters. Yeah, yeah. I figured you would. Uh, one of them ain't so good, Pasquale. This uh, dirty old one, see? Oh, it's a counterfeit, sir. Yeah, it's a fake. <laughs> I got it from that bum left here at the pool room. But honest, I wouldn't try to pass it on you, Pasquale. 
You know how tight you are about dough. I uh, mean, I could get a ten-year rap and... Uh, ten years in a jail, eh? Huh? Yeah. Uh, if only I could make a Luigi pass at this above a quarter. Who the trouble I could get him in. What? <laughs> what? All right, Joe, all right. The scramooch, you beat it. You all paid out for beat it. Gee, thanks, Miss Quarley. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a mean trick, cut of Luigi. But when I lead him my horse at the water and he won't marry, I get him mad. <laughs> well, come on, a little counterfeit. See, we got a work to do. Ah, bro, figaro, bravo, Luis, ah, bro, figaro, bravo, Luis. Fortunatissimo. Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi, hello, hello. Ha, <laughs> hello, Pasquale. Hey, you look good today, little banana nose. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, Pasquale. Look, your eyes are black and shiny like olives. Lips are red like a red tomatoes. Ears are hanging down like a two cabbage leaves. Hair nice and curly like a rag of mop. <laughs> Luigi, I put a two swinging doors on you. I got a supermarket. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> hey, how's the business with you, little pumpkin head? Well, looking at Castor Edge, it's a Pasquale see for yourself. Hmm. Well, at least you ain't wearing out the inside with the money. <laughs> well, uh, well, the business is a pretty bad, but uh, I'm always uh, hoping it's uh, going to get a little better. Hey, Luigi. What? What's this on the side of the cash register? Look, it's a quarter. Huh? That's your lucky day. Ha! <laughs> That's right. I'm a millionaire. <laughs> hey, wait, the Pasquale. Huh? Hey, look. Look on this quarter. It says 1827 on the bottom. So what? Hey, Pasquale, don't you see? 1827 and 1950. This quarter's 125 years old. Good. Let's put some birthday candles on it. <laughs> no, no, Pascal, you, you, you don't understand. I'm an antique business, and I know a little bit. This quarter must be worth a lot of money. Sure. Might even be worth the 25 cents. Pascal, that's, that's the biggest thing that's happened to me since I'm in America. Hey, this quarter maybe is going to make me famous. Sure. Right away tomorrow, they're going to put you a picture in all the papers with the big headlines. Luigi Bosco, three quarters Italian and one quarter American. Pasquale, <laughs> <laughs> Pasquale, this, this is my lucky day. Eighteen to twenty-seven American a quarter, and Luigi Bosco only three years in America. He's a got it. Hey, Pasquale, this, this, this might be worth maybe hundred dollars. Wow, those are gonna pay that kind of money for a quarter, Luigi. Well, I don't know, Pasquale, but maybe the government. Government. Hey, yes. Why don't you take it to the mint and the cash? Yeah, that's right. That's right. But... Oh, Pasquale, I'm, I'm a terrible man. Huh? What are you talking about? Here I'm on a something that's a piece of American history. And all I can think about is making the money from it. Oh, don't be a dope, Luigi. Take it to some place and try to cash it in. Who knows? They may give you a thousand of dollars for this account of... Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> no, 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 Pascali. That's, uh, that don't mean nothing. I'm, I'm not going to sell it. What? 1827. Hey, just think of Pasquale. Is it possible maybe George Washington is the one who owned this quarter? No, no, he's a died in a 1799. John Adams? No, no, he's a died about 1826. Thomas Jeff? No, no, he's also died in 1826. Luigi, for a fellow who's only three years in America, you know more dead presidents than ever. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, you take my advice. Take that a quarter down to Fort Knox and tell him you want to make an even swap. Let me see, it's Andrew Jackson. Hey, Pasquale, Andrew Jackson was a living in 1827. Maybe he's on this quarter. Better still, take a train to Ohio. Ask a Columbus if he recognizes this. <laughs> <laughs> Be sensible, Luigi. You could use that much money. That's a true, Pasquale, but... Oh, mama me, I'm, I'm late for my night school. And maybe my friends are there. They're going to make up my mind for me. Goodbye, Pasquale. Luigi, wait. No, <laughs> Papa Squeak. They tell him it's a fake a quarter. My whole scheme ain't worth to plug the nickel. All right, Schultz, don't worry about a thing. Quietly, we're a little late, so I'll skip the roll call. 
Uh, Mr. Basco, you have your hand raised already? Yes, sir, Miss Bunning. Uh, uh, what would you do if you was a founder, 18 or 27 a quarter? Uh, not was found, Mr. Basco. Found, found, found. Now repeat the sentence. Uh, Miss Bunning, uh, what would you do if you was a founder, 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 18 or 27 a quarter? <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like the Andrew sister. <laughs> oh, please. Uh, and now then, Mr. Basco, what is this about an 1827 quarter? Oh, I'm a founder to buy my cash ledger, and, I, and I'm a like to keep it, Miss Spalding, but Pasquale tells me I'm a got to sell it. Well, how much is that quarter worth, Mr. Basco? Fifty, maybe a hundred dollars, I think. Oh, if I could only age a few loose quarters, I could retire for life. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Basco, you'll have to figure out your own problem. Now, class, it might be instructive to review some of the events that occurred in America around 1827. Mr. Horowitz, could you tell us who was president at the time? 1827, let me figure. Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, Andrew Jackson. Uh, no, you're missing one president. Well, he's probably fishing in Florida. <laughs> Mr. Schultz. Hey, Martin Van Buren. No. Harrison, Tyler, Polk. Uh, no, no. Uh, Mr. Schultz. Kill me. I like Ike. <laughs> <laughs> what? I also like Mr. Stevenson, Miss Spalding. Oh. Yeah. This election, I'm voting for both parties. I want to be on the winning side. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still trying to find out who was president in 1827. Uh, Miss Spaulding, I don't have to raise my hand, but you know I could tell you the name of that president. Also the members of his cabinet. Also the important political developments of that period. Yeah, but who's asking you? Just find us the missing president and sit down, please. <laughs> oh, please, please, Mr. Schultz. Uh, go on, Mr. Olson. Yo, ho. Uh, John Quincy Adams was president at that time, 1827 to 1828. Quincy? Who could remember a name like that? <laughs> uh, go on, Mr. Olson. Tell us something about the election of 1824. Certainly. Uh, the year 1824 found five important candidates for the presidency. John Quincy Adams, Henry Clay, John C. Calhoun, W.H. Crawford, and Andrew Jackson, who was considered the greatest living soldier. Quincy, go remember a name like that. Uh, Mr. Olson, what happened in the election of 1824? Well, Andrew Jackson was far ahead in the popular vote, but no candidate had a majority of the electoral college. And how was the president chosen, Mr. Basco? I don't know, maybe there was a toss a quarter? <laughs> A quarter? What quarter? His 1827 quarter, what else? <laughs> Therefore, the, the choice went to the House of Representatives, and they chose John Quincy Adams. Oh, that's very good, Mr. Olson. And as for you, Mr. Basco, no, I do... Miss Bunning, don't, don't be mad at me. I'm, I'm so excited about finding this 18 to 27 a quarter, and some mixed up that I, what I should have cash it or keep it. I'm... Well, what would you like to do, Mr. Basco? Keep it. Well, then keep it. Uh, better still, Luigi, I trade you that 1827 quarter for 1827 salami I got in my delicatessen. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, uh, I say hold on to it, too. What do you think, Mr. Harwood? Ah, huh? Don't ask him. He's still trying to figure out another name for Quincy. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, if keeping that old quarter is going to make you happy, then don't sell it for any price. Not, not even for $50 a show? Not even for 100 200, 500, 500. <laughs> Listen, Luigi, if anybody offers you $500, let me know and we're going to start making 1827 quarters together. <laughs> <laughs> Before we return to life with Luigi, here's something good to keep in mind. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a refreshing, delicious treat that you can enjoy almost any time and any place, no matter what you're doing. Even when you're working with your hands or driving your car, you can enjoy the fun and satisfaction of chewing a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint. The pleasant chewing goes right along with whatever you're doing. Then, too, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum cools your mouth, freshens your taste and satisfies that little hungry feeling without being rich or heavy. So carry a handy package of delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum with you wherever you go. Enjoy it often, every day, as millions do. Remember, that's Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, 
delicious. Now, let's turn to page two of Luigi Vasco's letter to his mother in Italy. To well, mamma mia, after my classes advised me, I'm going to decide not to sell my it in a 27 a quarter. And instead, I'm going to take good care of it. I'm going to clean and scrub it at the quarter so hard that I think maybe I rubbed off for nickel is worth it. <laughs> but the mamma mia, is, is it so wonderful to own a little piece of America like this? Only thing, Pasquale still bothers me. I should have sell it. And, oh, here he's coming now. Hey, Luigi. Luigi, maybe those are school chumps who think they give you good advice, but I just talk with my lawyer. He says you've got to get rid of that quarter quick because you already violated America's biggest law. Biggest? I had to, what the law? The FCC. FCC, what's that? To? Finding colonial coins. <laughs> <laughs> you just for making this up. Besides, why do you want it so much? I'm sure to sell it. Well, if you must know, it's something you should have thought of yourself. You owe me three months' of rent, yes? Yes, sir. Pay up. How about it, Pasquale? Why you suddenly want me to pay the rent of money now? Because of the OPA you just opened up with the fishing season, and every landlord is allowed to catch one tenant. <laughs> Pay up. No, Pasquale, wait, wait, please. Just a little while. Sooner my antique business is going to start and a, and a busy season. Oh, is stop. You have your busy season this morning when a fellow walk into your store and asks you for the right time. Busy. <laughs> Where's the rent money? I'm waiting. No, Pasquale, please. Uh, don't make me sell this a quarter. Luigi, please don't try to work out of my good nature. You know you could do that because when I deal with you, I lose my head. I get soft. That's it, right. You, you're so right, Pasquale. You got the softest head I'm ever saw. <laughs> That's a funny thing. When I say it, it's a come out of different. <laughs> Excuse me, now I'm going to go to my night to Wait school. a minute to come here. I order you to cash in that quarter, you hear me? And if I'm a dentist... Tomorrow morning, how do you go? But where, Pasquale, where, where am I going to move it Well, to? I just saw a big new project to be in the built to Luigi. The rent is free. You could try them. But the where, where, where is it that the place? In Hamilton Park, two birds are building a beautiful nest overlooking the lake. <laughs> Luigi, my fellow movers. Ach. Why does I... that look? Schultz, Schultz, I'll leave it up with you. This fellow owes me three months of rent. I'm as a landlord. Am I got a right to the rent or no? Well, my answer's got to be a little prejudiced, Pasquale. On account of I owe my landlord five months' rent. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be like that, Pasquale. Money isn't everything in life. There's other things. Health, happiness, a good job, children, a home, security, money... <laughs> well, I just dug my own grave. <laughs> all I know, I'm entitled to my rent. Ach, don't talk like that, Pasquale. After all, you brought this little Wiener Schnitzel to America, and he's your countryman. Country. Uh, Anybody who won't marry my daughter is a foreign spy. <laughs> <laughs> so you're giving Luigi the old squeeze play with Rosa, hmm? That's all right. Easy to squeeze it with a Rosa or pay the rent. <laughs> <laughs> Please, but a rent squeeze, that's a new one. <laughs> nah, ain't a waste of no more breath with you, Schultz. And as for you, Mr. Quarter Pincher, you better get that a rent of money or else. Luigi. Huh? Let's pay him off his money now. How much do you owe him? Hundred twenty dollars, sir. Maybe you better come live with me for a while. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it tanks are just the same as sure. No, sure, why not? You can come live with me and my happy little family. Yeah, that's me, my wife Frieda, the three children, Uncle Hugo, Aunt Wilhelmina, the twins, Cousin Wolfgang, Cousin Felix, Grandpa Max, his girlfriend Zadie. <laughs> and the vacuum cleaner salesman who stayed after a demonstration. <laughs> That humor salesman, how long has he been his time? <laughs> well, you see, he sold us a vacuum cleaner with a 90-day guarantee, and we are holding him till it expires. Come on, Luigi. No, 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 Schultz. I know you only got the two rooms. Two? We got three. We threw the broom out of the broom closet. Stop <laughs> going, Luigi. We got it all figured out. You see, me and Frieda and the kids, we got the bedroom. Well, Aunt Wilhelmina sleeps on the sofa. Uncle Hugo is on the army cart. Oh, you got a real army cart, Schultz? Ach, no, it's just a plain cart. But the way Uncle Hugo snores, it sounds like he's playing taps. 
Then, then the cousin, they sleep on the floor. You see, on the floor. And then Grandpa Max sleeps on the roof, on the television aerial. On the television aerial? Yeah, yeah. He's still trying to figure out how the pictures come down into the house. <laughs> what, what, what do you say, Luigi? Choking aside, you know, we got plenty of room for Well, sure, so that, that, that's, that's not going to end my problem. I, I think I'm making too much trouble about my, my 18 to 27 a quarter. I'm going to sell it to you hate to do that, huh, Luigi? I'm got no choice, you should Yeah, say. well, I know. But cheer up, Luigi. Smile. You know, like we say in the delicatessen uh-huh. business, when a herring has got nothing left to live for, he goes out and gets pickled. You <laughs> 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 you're a funny shirt. But but then and now I'm 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 got to find a place to. Do. To cash in in my quarter. No, wait, Luigi, wait. I pass a place every day. It's on South Dearborn, near Adams. Yeah, uh, uh, Brown, Brown, that's the name. Brown, Brown. Well, uh, good, I'm uh, going to go there. Yeah, yeah, and even even if they don't give you a lot of money, Luigi, don't worry. Because in America, you know, there's three places you can always eat and sleep for free, and nobody asks you for the rent. Three places? Yeah. You, where is yours, sir? The Army, the Navy, and the Marine. <laughs> That's right, Luigi. That's right, Luigi. Laugh. Be like me. Always happy. Always laughing. (laughs) (laughs) My rheumatism is killing me. (laughs) Hmm, that's the nicest time in the coins in this window. Is a whole lot. Sign it says, uh, Sam Brown, all the stamps and the coins are bought and sold. <laughs> Mommy, how is he make the money if he's a buy from you and he's a still a sell you right the back? <laughs> well, I'm going to go in. Yes, sir. Something special, sir? I'm going to like to sell you a quarter. American? No, not yet. As soon I'm going to get to my citizen papers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the quarter. Oh, oh, sure, sure. That's a real American. What year is it, sir? 1827. Mamma mia, you so pale it. Don't you feel it too good? An 1827 quarter? Are you a numismatist? I'm a... Huh? <laughs> I mean, are you a coin collector? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but I just uh, collect the 1827 quarters. Well, may I see the coin, sir? Oh, sure. Here. Good heavens, it is 1827. That's right. Hey, you know who was the president then? Yes, John Quincy Adams. That's right. <laughs> you know, you would be very smart in my night school class. Thank you. <laughs> now, just a minute while I inspect it under the microscope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's it? Maybe I can look through the little glass with you? Go right ahead. <laughs> hey, that eagle is looking so big, he's, he looks like he's going to eat to me. <laughs> Now, just a moment, sir, while I check through my catalog for the facts on this coin. Mm Mm-hmm. The head has the bust of liberty. Check. The 1827 is underneath. Check. And these should be 13 stars. Check. Please, uh, pay me with a cash and no checks. (laughs) Just a moment, please. Now, the reverse side. It says United States of America inside the wreath. Good. The American eagle with spread wings, face to the left. Uh Aha. And the E pluribus unum. Mr. Basco, I can give you $100 for this coin. Please, uh, make it 120 Well, all right. It's a deal. Oh, thank you, thank you. Mamma mia, I'm a more American than I ever was before. John Quincy Adams has paid three months' rent for me. <laughs> Hey, Pascal, here. Here's your rent the money. Hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> Luigi, what a surprise. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, what, what, what are you laughing about? <laughs> it so happens I got a good friend who could tell you all about it. <laughs> hey, Joe, what kind of a coin you gave me before? You mean that counterfeit quarter? Kind of, counterfeit kind of a quarter? <laughs> hey, Pasquale. You know it all the time. <laughs> it's just the one of my little traps, Luigi. <laughs> that's, that's, why, that's why you wanted me to pass it. 
Hanami, Hanami, the trouble. Hey, give me back the money. I'm, I'm going to buy it back. Oh, take it easy. Calm down. Relapse. The most that they can <laughs> give you for trying to pass a fake coin is a 90 years at the life. And then, what? Important thing now is that we should find you a good lawyer who's going to habeas our corpus so uh, <laughs> you and me, we can get out of trouble. Are you and me? We, I said... Sure. You and me, Pascali. Sure. You pocket in my pocket, that's a one pocket. Oh, that's a nice thank you, Pasquale. <laughs> that's a nothing. Now I do you a little favor, you do me a little favor. Pasquale, <laughs> <laughs> what's a little favor you want I should do? I want you should make me a grandpapa. <laughs> you want I should make a grandpapa? Mm -hmm. Well, all right, Pasquale. From now on, you can call me grandson. Oh, stop. <laughs> You want to marry Rosa, Mr. Counterfeit? So maybe you want to send me picture poster cards from Alcatraz. Alcatraz, that's, that's the prison. That's all right. I'm yeah. going to go there if I don't. Ah. Well, well, all right, Pascali, then, then, then I, I got to marry her. But it's only because I want to have a clean record in America. That's what I like, a real patriot. <laughs> Rosa. Rosa. <laughs> Rosa. Hello, Russia. <laughs> Russia, how you like it to get married? Oh. <laughs> and, uh, and how would you like it to have a Luigi along on the honeymoon? All right, if my husband lets me. <laughs> oh, shut up, you <laughs> Well, children. Ah, Mr. Basco. Oh, Mamma Mia. That's the kind of man. All right, all right. Fella just just the... stand behind me, Luigi. Mister, the whole thing was a bigger mistake. This fellow's a new in America. He don't know a fake a quarter from a real quarter. Fake? That quarter he gave me is real. A genuine collector's item. I came down here as quick as I could. If you found one, you might have another. Huh? Gee, I better beat it back to that pool room. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, Joe. I thought you said it was counterfeit. But, Squally, it wasn't worth a quarter. I never said anything about a hundred and twenty dollars. Mamma mia, I'm out of all of my trouble. Hey, wait, I, wait, I, wait, I, wait. The holy horses. I put down a quarter near your cash register, Luigi. That's my own money I got back. Well, that's right, Pascali. And like you said it before, we both got the one pocket, right? <laughs> That's not so. What's a mine is a mine, or what's a yours is a yours. That's all right, Pasquale, and that's all right with me. Now, stop changing the subject. I want you to give up your bachelorhood and marry my daughter. What do you say, my son? And nothing to do with what's a mine is a mine, and what's a yours is a yours. All right. <laughs> Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they were out to remind you that chewing delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is a pleasant way to ease the strain and tension most of us build up during a busy day. You see, sinking your teeth into a good, smooth piece of gum gives you a natural feeling of comfort and satisfaction. It helps relax you so that you feel better and do better. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum tastes good, too. It has a lively, refreshing, real spearmint flavor that millions enjoy. So when the going is tough, when you need to relax a bit without stopping what you're doing, enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Get a few packages and always keep refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to be sure to listen next week at this same time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. Pat Burton is associate producer. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Schiff as Miss Paulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Olsen, and Fred Shields as Mr. Brown. Music under the direction of Lud Gluster. Charles Lyon speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.
Hop along.